In this video, I'm gonna teach you a more advanced way to create professional Python programs that can be run with command line arguments and flags, and we're gonna do that using the module argparse. So, in this video, I'm going to show you a more complex way of using command line arguments, and it's more suited for bigger programs with a lot of arguments, options, combinations, etc., etc. Of course, you can use this also for smaller and simpler projects, but I've also made a video where I show you how to use another way for smaller programs, and I'll leave the link in the description if you want to check that out after this one. They're both definitely worth learning because you can use one or the other according to the program you're making. So, first of all, we need to import a module which is called arg pass okay so now that we have the module we need to create an instance of the parser and we can store it in the parser variable okay so arg pass argument parser like that okay and the argument parser can have a lot of parameters but most of the time you're not going to change the value of a lot of them because the default value is already good and in the docs you have a list of all of them but as I said, you'll find yourself changing just a few, like the description and maybe if you want the help message or not. So we can do something like description, as you can see, and then program that does something, something like that. Okay. And then we can add help like that. And here we can set it to false. Okay. And in this case, you'll have the description, but if you use something like program.py hyphen h, Okay, you won't get anything in this case because the help message is disabled. But as I want it to be shown, I need to set it to true or just don't write it altogether because true is the default value. So now that we've got our parser in place, we can add arguments. Okay, and to do that, we're going to use the add argument method. So something like parser, add argument like this. So the first thing to pass to the add argument can be a positional argument, which is always required, or you can pass a series of flags that are treated as optional arguments, okay, by default. So let's actually add the first positional argument, file name, like that. And file name is just used as a sort of placeholder for the argument. And in this case, it's required. And to actually be able to pass all the arguments, okay, we need to call pass args, which returns a list of arguments. Okay. And we can assign the result to the variable arguments. So parser, pass args, like that. And then we can print the arguments like this. Let's actually try to run the, first of all, let's try to run the help message and see what we get. So Python program help like that. Okay. This is done automatically by our pass. So you don't need to create anything. As you can see, use it program.py h, which is, as you can see, between square brackets, which means that this is optional and this is not optional because this is just written like that. And then here you've got your description the positional arguments and then the options show this help message and exit okay in fact as you can see we didn't get the arguments printed because when you call the h the help message python actually exits after let's now actually use an argument okay and see what we get so instead of h we use file.txt and as you can see you've got a namespace file name file.txt okay as you can see the file name here is the same as the name of the argument. So file name is a placeholder and is actually also used to access the value. In fact, you can access each single argument using the dot notation. So you can do something like print arguments dot file name. And let's start to run it again. As you can see, you get file name dot txt. Pretty cool. Do you remember when we called the, uh, the help message, we got like a sort of description. Let's actually here you've got shot this help message. That would be nice to have this uh, description also for the file name, for example. So something like file name to enter, etc. And we can actually add that using the help parameter. So here, add argument, help, and then file name of the file to process, something like that. And now if you call the help again, you can see file name of the file to process. So this is a description for the argument of course the arguments the file name you can store it in something like file and then use it 
down below. Of course, you, you should check if the file exists, etc., etc. But this is not the topic of today's video. Okay. So if you run the program without a file name, Python will tell you that it's required. And this is, as I said, automatic. So let's say that you just write program.py, use it like that, and then you get the following arguments are required, file name, okay? Because the file name is a positional argument. There is also a possibility to completely remove an argument from the help message. And you just need to use the value, this value for the help. So instead of having, let's actually duplicate that. Okay, comment this out, okay? And here you need to use arg pass suppress like that. And now if you run again the help, as you can see, you don't have the file name. In this case, it doesn't make sense to remove it, but you know that there is this possibility. Let's actually do this, okay? In this case here, we're just requiring a file name without any flags or options, etc. But what if we wanted to add options? Well, if you add an hyphen before the name of the argument, that means that that is an option. And of course, it's treated as optional. Let's actually delete this and go back to this like that perfect let's add an option here so parser add argument this is the same and then here we use hyphen c hyphen hyphen copy help make n copies of the file okay something like that and as you can see i've added also this one hyphen hyphen this is not required, but in my opinion, it's always good to have a long form name that describes the command better. Plus the long form name is also used when accessing the value. So it's usually good to have it back. So now you might think that you can actually do something like this. So Python program and then the flag and then file.txt. Let's see what we get. The following arguments are required. Why doesn't it work? So any option has an action which you can change. Okay. I'm going through all of them because I think that all of them can be really useful. And along the way, I'll show you different parameters that you can add to the add argument method. So I'll show you different parameters that you can actually add to this method and also all the actions for the options. So the default action is store. So something like action store like that. This is the default one. And you don't need to write it explicitly because this is the default. So you can actually do something like this and that is the exact same thing. So the store action expects a value after the copy argument. And you can see it in the help method. So let's actually try to run the help method again, like this. As you can see, you get C copy, and this copy. So copy is actually the value of the C flag. Okay, so it expects the C flag and then a value for the C flag. But in this case, it might be clearer if we wrote something like C and then here N, because here you've got N, make N copies, and then here you actually specify the number of copies. And luckily you can do that using the metaVar parameter. So let's actually try to use it. So metaVar, then here N, Okay, and now if we call the help again, as you can see, CN, and then here make N copies. So this is so much clearer. And now you should have understood why the command here, this one doesn't work. Why? Because basically file.txt is considered the N, okay? So if you've got C, then here Python expects the N, the value of the copies, the number of the copies, and then here, the file name. But in this case, the file name is considered the N and it tells you that you don't have the file name because of course you should have C and then the number of copies and then the file name. Okay. I hope that makes sense. And if you run something like C and then the N, let's say three, as you can see, now that works and copy is used. So basically Python removes the two hyphens from the long form name of the argument and uses it as the name used to access the value. And although we actually have the metaVar n, here you still use copy. Of course, as I said earlier, you can access like arguments.filename, arguments.copy, et cetera, et cetera. And so far, we've actually seen that with the action store, we need to enter a value after the option. Okay, in this case, you are 
required to enter a value after this C, but maybe you just want the user to enter the option as a flag and then use a constant, okay, a constant value that you decide beforehand. So let's say that we have a new argument. Let's say that we have a new argument S. Let's actually duplicate this. Let's say that we got S like that. And here we write something just because this is an example. And you want the value of something when you use the S to be always 15 for some reason. To do that, you need to use the action store const. Let's actually remove this. So action store const like that, and then const 15, which means that when you've got the S, you'll have the something equal to 15. So let's actually try to see what we get. First of all, you don't need to specify any value because the value is not expected. As you can see, you've got something 15. Okay, you just added the S without any value. And this is by default 15. Copy is none because you didn't use the C flag and the value. And of course, this is a way to actually check if you've got the arguments. Okay, so down here, you can do something like if copy, do something. If not copy, do something else. If something, do something, etc., etc. So you can do whatever you want down here once you've got all the arguments. There is also a store true and store false. So if you use the store true, let's actually try this. So store true. You don't need to have that constant like that. Okay, so if you use store true, when you write the flag, the value of something is true. And when you don't write it, it's false. So let's actually try to see what, we, what I'm talking about. So in this case, you've got something true because you've got the flag. If you don't have the flag, you've got false. So this is a good way to, to do something if uh, the user actually enters the flag or not. And store false is the other way around. So if you don't have it, true. If you have it, false, okay? And in this case, Python is not expecting any value after the option. So you can write it before and after the file name, it was just fine. There is also a parameter to set the name of the attribute instead of using the long form. So in this case, you're using something or copy and to access it, you need to use arguments.copy, arguments.something. But let's say that you want this to be copy, but then you want another name to access the value. And you can set it using the dest parameter, new, that's done something like that. And now if you use the C flag with a value, of course, four, you can see new dest. Instead of having copy is equal to four, you get new dest four, okay? So when you are using a program, you expect to be able to write something like hyphen V, hyphen, hyphen version to get the version of the program, right? Luckily, there is an action also for that, which is the action version, okay? Which makes sense, right? So parser, Another argument, in this case, we write v and version, like that, action version, and then another parameter, version, which is the version of the program. So program py v1.0, you know, something like that. And now, really cool, you can access it using v like that, and you get the version of your program. And so far, we haven't really validated the value of the arguments, okay? So for copy, for example, you don't want a string like, hello, you just want a number, the number of copies. And there is a really useful parameter that is used to convert the value to a specific type. And if that is not possible, it tells the user that that is not possible. So it basically validates the type for us, and that is pretty cool. So the parameter I'm talking about is type. Let's actually use it for the copy. So let's do something like this to make things a bit better. Okay, so type like that, int, for example. So before we actually try to run it, you need to know that the parser treats the value of the argument as a string. But using the parameter type, we're telling it to treat it as an integer in this case. And it basically converts the string to an integer. If that is not possible, you get an error. So let's actually try now to run it. So we've got C, we've got five, and then the file.txt. As you can see, now this is an integer. It doesn't have like the quotes, but if we were to write something, hello, something like that, this cannot be converted to integer. 
I get an error, argument copy, invalid, int, value, hello, okay? You can actually use all the types you want, even daytime, path, etc., etc. So let's now see an example with daytime because I think that it's really, really interesting. So first of all, I need to import daytime like that. And then here, let's actually change the copy, okay, just to show you. And instead of int, we're going to use daytime.date dot from iso format so this is actually a class method and that is used to convert the date that user writes as a string to a date object by the way i've explained class methods in the second video of my series on classes so if you're interested in learning more about that and more about classes watch my series of five videos to learn object-oriented programming and classes and of course after this one so let's now write it with a normal string like let's try to run something like hello that is fine. And you can see argument invalid value, hello, because you didn't write something that is convertible to a date object. But if you were to write something like, I don't know, something like this, this, and this, like that, as you can see now, you've got datetime.date, so a date object with these values. And now if you access the new dest, new destination, you get the date object directly. Okay, basically you convert the value and also validate it at the same time, which is so, so cool. So let's actually go back to our example without the datetime. That was just to show you how powerful this is. So let's go back to int like that. So let's now actually add a new argument, which represents the name for the copies. So let's add it down here. So parser, add argument. I'm gonna call it n name, and I'm gonna use a default value. So I'm gonna show you what that is in a second. So when the user doesn't write the n option, the default value is used. Instead of having none, you change the default value and you change it to file copy like that. So now if you run the program with just the file name like that, as you can see, you get name file copy. So the default value is used, but if you write the N with new name like that, you can see you get name new name. So the default value is used when you don't enter the N flag. Of course, in this case, if you make more than one copy, you need to create different file names like file copy one, file copy two, etc. But here we are not really creating the logic of the program, we are just creating the commands, okay, the arguments to enter. If you want to make an option required, you can set the required parameter to true, which is not recommended because options should be treated as optional. But you know that you could do something like required true, and this is always required. So if you run the program with just the file name like that, and is required, okay? But in this case, it doesn't make sense because this is optional, so it should be optional, right? Perfect. Another really cool parameter is choices to actually let the user enter just one of the possible values. And let's actually use it here as well, okay? So choices, you need to write a list with, I don't know, name one and then name two. So now you can just enter name one or name two and that is specified in the help as well. So as you can see, you've got name one, name two, and let's actually use it. And file.txt, let's do something like that. Name one, name two is the same. Let's say that we're gonna use name three. Invalid choice. Name three, choose from name one, name two. Kinda cool, right? Perfect. But now you might be asking yourself, how can we actually enter more than one value? So let's say that we want two file names instead of just one. You can do that using the n args parameter and we can actually use it with the file name. Okay, because let's say that we want to be able to enter more than one file name. You can use a specific number, in this case, two file names. So down here, you can do something like file.txt. And as you can see, you've got another file name required. So file name, file one.txt, as you can see now that works, and you get a list of the file names. But instead of the number of values, you can use a question mark like that, which basically expects one argument. And if the value is not written, the default value will be used. So let's actually write a default value as well. Then 
file.txt, like that. So if we just one, as you can see, file.txt, of course, let's actually change it file one. So we can see the difference. If you don't write the file name, you've got file1.txt, which is the default one. And when it comes to optional arguments, you can also specify the const parameter. Let's actually try that with the copy. So let's delete all of that. Keep just the copy to make things simpler. Okay, so that, then default one, and then const two. A lot of parameters, but how can we actually use them? If you use the C flag with a value, the value will be used. So C and then four, as you can see, copy four. And then just the C flag, as you can see, copy two, the value of const. And then if you don't write the flag at all, it uses the default value. Of course, when you write the arguments, you need to write them in the right order. In this case, if you want to use the C flag without using a value, you need to use it after the file name. Because in this case, if you write something like C and then file.txt, the value of the copy is file.txt. But why? Shouldn't it be const? Because we wrote the flag, but it didn't write the value. But Python sees that after the C flag, there is a value, and this is considered the value of the C flag of the copy. Okay. And as you can see, file1.txt, which means that Python actually used the default value. So you need to be careful when you do something like that. And you need to write that here. As you can see now, that works as expected. So when you write commands, etc., you need to take this into account and also because the user could run into the same problem. So this is a good reason to write a good documentation for your program, okay? How you need to write things, the order, etc., etc. That is really, really important. And then you've got the asterisk. So let's actually use it here with the file name. And here you can write uh, as many as you want. So you could write uh, a lot of file 2.txt, file 3.txt, okay, you've got as many as you want, that's fine. And then you've got the plus, plus here. And this is the same as the asterisk, but if you don't write at least one value, you get an error, okay? Even if you have set the default parameter. So you can write one, okay, that's fine. But if you don't write one, you get required, even though you have the default value, and then you can write as much as you want. As you can see, that works as well like the asterisk. So let's now have a look at other actions you can use, which are quite useful as well. By the way, if you're still watching, you're definitely enjoying the video. So give it a like to let me know that you're finding this helpful and also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, okay? So another possible action that you can use, let's actually delete those like that, okay? As I was saying, another action could be append, so let's right here and this action lets the user use the same option more than once so you can use something like s i don't know just okay six whatever 94 like that as you can see you get a list with five six 94 so you can use the argument as many times as you want and you get a list also if you get if you use it just once as you can see, you still have a list, so you need to take this into account. And there is also append const, which is basically used to append the constant values to a specific list. And of course, you can add values from different arguments to a list specified with a dest parameter. Let's actually see what I mean. So let's write append and then the const here. One, let's duplicate it. I don't know, O, other, okay, append const, const two. Now, if you run that with S and O, you get something, one and other, two. But if you specify the destination, like list values, like that, and you specify the same destination here, list values, like that, now you see that you get one list with the value of S and the value of O. Okay, and another really interesting value for the action is count, and I'm just going to show you. So let's move this to this, like that, and then const. Okay, so count like that, and you can also write a default value, zero in this case. Let's actually try to run it. So 
as you can see, just one S, you get something one. But if you write two S's, you get something two. I say five S's, something five. If you don't write the S, you get zero, something zero, okay? So basically, this could be really useful when you want maybe to increase the level of something. One S, you do something, one level, two S's, you do something else, etc., etc. And another action is extend, which is similar to append, but let's see the difference. So let's say that here we've got append. Okay, and we're going to use the plus. So if you now run this program S3 and S4 and 5, like that, as you can see, you get one list and inside the list, another list with the three and another list with the four and five, okay? Which is not ideal. But instead of getting this, we want to get just one list. So if we use extend, extend like that, and we run the same thing. As you can see, you just get one list with all the arguments, not just, not two lists like this, okay? So now on the screen, you should see the video about the other way to use arguments. I highly recommend you go and watch it. Also, don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you soon. Bye.